Guys, number one, make sure you hold the mic like this and not like this. Step two, make sure you hold the mic close to your lips. Step three, there's going to be a lot of people here, so make sure you know who you're behind. I mean, just go bam, 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 bam. You know, step four. There's Bryce. There's Bryce. Anyway, come on up. Go right back. So, let me see that clicker. Yeah, go ahead. Go. I know, you're third, but your itinerary changes because we're professional. <laughs> so we get a preview of Elizabeth. Oh, there we go. Bryce McKinley, give him the same love. <laughs> just the one love, just the one love is all I need. <laughs> Bryce McKinley, y'all. Uh, so, Y'all excited to be here? Come on now. I'm about to talk about making money. Are you excited to be here? Good So my name is Bryce. I don't know what happened with the picture up here, but uh, I'm up and uh, I'm going to be talking about the art of negotiating larger profits. This is something that is super, super exciting for me and it should be for you. If you're in fix and flip, if you're in car sales and you're thinking about it, if you're in wholesale, if you don't know how to get the money you're making larger, you're leaving money on the table, right? Yeah. Exactly. So, a little bit about me if you don't know, in seven minutes, I've been at this for about five years, knew nothing about this deal, and Within five years, I've scaled the company from one or two deals a month to 55 to 60 closings a month. Wholesale. And so, I tell you that not to brag, but I want you to know that there is an art to this thing, and I want to share it with you as much as I can cram in in seven minutes. And so, okay. there's a lag. Okay. Do I need to point it at them? I'm afraid I'm going to hit the laser and get somebody in the eye. <laughs> the art of negotiating larger profits. When you think of this idea, you know, brainstorm, what am I going to talk about, throw it on the wall. This really could go into anything, not just real estate. If you're trying to buy your wife a car, you probably want to save a little money, right? If you get a larger profit or cut their profits, you're putting more money in your bank, right? We're going to talk about that. If you're trying to do a wholesale deal and you haven't watched my videos in, in prospecting and negotiating them, you need to know a few things. And so what I'd like to talk about are the three things that must happen every single time. Number one, this is no big deal. Cultivate a no big deal attitude. Number two, still trying to figure out what the lag is. I know what it says. Number two is follow a script or a process. Making me nervous, making me look bad. And then, number three, is it going to do this when it starts flipping? Because I'm not very tech savvy, and I got some flips coming up. someone else and putting more money in your pocket. So let's talk about this. 
the art of negotiating profits. It's going to keep saying that and we get stuck on that. It doesn't matter. You guys got the three bullet points? Has everybody got the three bullet points? Yeah. All right. I was hoping to have this down, but we're going to wing it. It's what I do best. I love it. It's what I do best. So, there it goes. No big deal attitude. As you can see, oh, so I, this is no big deal. Right? I had someone tell me the other day, well, if you're talking to a homeowner and you got a no big deal attitude, will they think that you're serious? Because, by the way, if you didn't walk by me, I'm like 6'5 and 250. I have to put on a character every single time I talk to somebody. These people get intimidated. I'm not that serious. No big deal attitude. I said, no, really, it's no big deal. You know what I say to these folks is something very simple. Cedric, I don't need your business, but I want it. If you guys have never been in any type of sales, know that owning a business, being in a real estate, fixing and flipping a house, talking and communicating to your contractors, your employees, you better have a no big deal attitude because you're going to run into some things if you haven't already done it yet. Okay? Having a no big deal attitude taught me that I don't necessarily need these people's business. I want it. So how do I do that? Provide a solution? Sure. But you've got to find a way to add value to their time, their money, and their family. But you can't add value to any or all of the above, you're not gonna be making as much money as you should if you get that deal, I promise you. Grant, you're making me nervous. He's the only sales guy that I think would really give me a hard time, and I love it. I want to go like co-selling 101, like smiling down the road. But it's no big deal, right? It's no big deal. Next thing that I want to talk about that is definite and imperative to your business, there it goes, I can. follow a process, find a script. If you guys didn't know that Propelio is giving you a bunch of free information, yeah. and I'm not, I could be selling you something, right? Absolutely not, he said. $9.97. $19.97 an hour. <laughs> Follow a script, follow a process. If you don't have one, find one. Art's got some, I've got some, these guys have some. Find one until you can make it. You've heard the term, fake it till you make it? Let me give you a few tips. If you don't have a script, you could use the old sales acronym, warm with form. Very simple. You gotta build rapport, you gotta add value to someone's time, their money, their family, right? How would you do that? The word form is a simple acronym. Family, occupation, recreation, sometimes money, but I like to talk about motivation. If I made this deal happen for you, when do you think you'd, how much time do you think you'd need to move out? They're committing before they knew they were committing. Something else that I like to talk about when I'm going through my process or my script is an acronym called ARC. If they tell you something that you don't like, is it Tim? I can't see it. Tim, if they tell you something that they don't like, you're pretty clean. You probably have problems with this, though. But if you acknowledge what they say, repeat it back to them, and then conquer that objection, acknowledge, repeat, conquer every objection, I promise you. You have an easier chance to get to that finish line. I promise you, you have a better opportunity to create a larger profit. Last but not least, I want to talk about what is probably my most important idea in real estate or this investment world. And that is knowing your numbers. Know your numbers. Say it. Know your numbers. A little better. Thank you, Tyler. Know your numbers. If you don't know where you're going, 
you probably have a hard time knowing how to get there. Wouldn't you agree? You imagine if you're down here trying to buy a new car like this young man was trying to buy his wife, and you don't know that the dealers have dealer cash, dealer cash back incentives, dealer hold back incentives, dealer check incentives, dealer service incentives, and you come in and you think you've seen a commercial for $15,000 off that new truck and you did a wholesale deal last month and you're buying a new truck, right? Yep. I gotcha. Because you just put about $20,000 in their pocket that could have probably been split or saved some more. That's just probably the minimum in my opinion. I made most of my money in the car business and had the most fun in that business. Where, you know, most people were doing one thousand or two thousand dollar commission. I'm doing seven, eight, nine, ten thousand dollar commissions. Are you the timer? Oh. Two oh, minutes. two minutes over, man. I'm sorry. It's the lag, bro. It's the lag. I thought he was gonna push me off the stage. So you got to know your numbers, right? I want to give you a quick tool. Take a picture. Everybody, get your camera out real quick, and I'll wrap this thing up. If you don't know how to negotiate your numbers, this is a very easy tool to do that. Oh! Did you get it? And I didn't even plan that. That was kind of cool. Let's try it again. Let me get out of the way. This is a very simple tool that I use with every single homeowner every time I talk to them on the phone. Y'all are going to meet and shaking hands. I haven't walked a property in three years. Hey, Joe! Grab a piece of paper and a pen. You ready? Do me a favor. You thought your house was worth 75. I think it's worth 100, so I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. And I want you to make a big T and write retail and then write cash. And I'll explain it to you what it means. At the top of your retail, we're going to give you the best case scenario, and I told you I think it's worth more than what you thought. At $100,000, you go hire a realtor, right? Right? And then you've got realtor fees. We've got some realtors in here. Love you guys. <laughs> love you. No, you don't. Don't lie. You hate hope something. I'm just kidding. Realtor fees, closing costs, appraisal costs, survey costs. And this is what you're left with, right? No. Because you still got to do the rehab, and then you take that number and add it down here at like 55 to 60,000 where I can get $1,400 in rent, and we're talking about, somebody else is talking about cap rate, I'm sure, right? And I know that money is worth a lot more. I broke my equation, and hey, Joe, I'm gonna give you about sixty-five dollars to $70,000 on that house. Would that, make, would that change your life? I'm saving about six months? Sure. Absolutely. Guess what? I'm gonna find one of y'all to come buy my property for about twelve or $13,000 All right. That's all I got. I hope that something, you, you got something out of that. And next time you go into a relationship, you go into a conversation, take that last deal and add five grand to it. It's very simple. Appreciate you guys. Love you. Okay, real quick. I, have, I need a four-step process. I want everyone.